This is the story of how I went from a non-runner to a sub-3 marathoner in just under three years. So I have not been a runner my whole life. I do not come from a family of runners. I did run in high school. I ran uh, track and cross country for two to three years in high school, uh, but then I stopped running my senior year of high school. I gained a bunch of weight before I started college. I gained maybe 20 or 30 pounds in the first year and then maybe another like 15 pounds throughout the course of undergrad uh, and I hadn't really run for about 10 years. I started running uh, just under three years ago when I decided to sign up for my first half marathon. I didn't know what I was doing and I looked up some uh, fitness magazines and online training guides and things that said run your first mar half marathon on you know three days of running a week. I had been going to the gym for years and I didn't do any crazy workouts but I had a good cardio base of just doing a lot of elliptical and some stair machine. Um, so when I started running I only ran three days a week uh, so I ran my first half marathon in about one hour and 41 minutes which uh, I thought it was really good for a first half marathon. I had just snuck into age group placing with fifth in my age group for that first half marathon. Uh, so I was pretty excited by it and I was ready to keep racing and sign up for some more races. My next few races, I ran about the same time for my next two half marathons, which I did like two and three months after my first half. So I hadn't really changed my training yet at this point, so I wasn't really getting any faster. I ran maybe one minute faster in my next half and maybe one minute faster than that and the one after that uh, I started training a little bit more and that's because uh, I had been going to a massage therapist who was also a runner and I had been talking to him about my training and my running and my races and my times uh, and he pointed out that I could run more than three days a week and try to do some more speed work and some workouts uh, get better like better quality training in and I would probably improve my performance which obviously in hindsight makes a lot of sense but again I didn't know what I was doing uh, I didn't have a training plan I wasn't sure what the workout should look like uh, and he mentioned he had a friend who had a cross-country team like a local cross-country team for adults and there's a series of races in the fall that they all competed he said his friend was looking for some women for her cross-country team and that I should join so uh, I decided to do that. I joined this cross-country team, uh, this running skirts cross-country team. So my uniform, I had a running skirt and I had a tank top and I had some compression socks and you know all the team members got uh, these outfits. So it was like a real team with a real uniform. During this cross-country season, uh, I got uh, in much, much better shape, even just by you know, being around all these runners, getting tips and advice and hearing about their training and what kind of runs and workouts they were doing, I got in a lot better shape and I got a lot faster. So I highly recommend if you are trying to get into better running shape and you're trying to get faster and you're not really sure where to go or what to do and you don't want to hire a coach, like you're not quite that serious, uh, I recommend trying to find uh, a t local team or a club to run and train with. A lot of local running stores either host weekly run clubs uh, or workouts and things like that. So after that cross-country season was actually when I won my first 5K. And then a couple weeks after that, this is in December, so a little over a year since I started running now. and. Uh, I did a, another half marathon. It had been about six months since I had done a half marathon and I uh, saw a huge difference in my performance at this half marathon. So my last few races, the only halves I had done before that were six months or a little more than six months in the past, they were all around one hour and 40 minutes. And in this half marathon, I broke 130. So I ran around a 129, which was huge for me. Uh, I thought, you know, I knew I had gotten faster and I was in better shape, but I hadn't been following a half marathon specific training plan, so I didn't really know what my pace was going to be or what my goal time should be. Uh, so this was uh, a really big improvement over a 10 minute PR, uh, which was really exciting. Uh, by now, uh, I had started dating uh, a runner, uh, and he's also uh, a competitive runner. Um, he coaches at a local high school, so he 
was incredibly helpful in kind of teaching me what competitive running looks like. People who are training to run fast and people who are racing competitively, you know, how much they run, what kind of workouts they do, um, how they try and take care of themselves in terms of stretching and foam rolling and massage and um, cross training and agility exercises and everything. So I've learned quite a lot uh, from him as well. So uh, at this point I'd been running almost a year and a half. Most of the following year I was training a little bit more consistently, my mileage was higher, and I wasn't, I still wasn't doing a ton of workouts. I relied a lot on racing to get myself into race shape and to stay in shape. So I didn't have any big goal races for that year or anything like that. So when January of this year rolled around, I wanted to challenge myself to try something different. So in January, I decided to sign up for my first marathon. The race was in May, so it was uh, just last month, uh, at the end of the month. And I started training in February. Uh, I had a 12-week training plan. Uh, Luis actually put it together for me. So he's a track and field and cross-country coach at a local high school. And he hadn't trained um, anybody for the marathon before, but obviously being a coach and being an experienced runner himself who had run in college and had been running consistently for a long time, uh, he knew basically how to train for a marathon, and he obviously knew way more than I did. Uh, so he helped, uh, well, he put together the training plan for me. And this was the first time I actually followed a training plan, especially a race-specific training plan for a particular distance, for a particular timeline. Uh, so I had, you know, weekly mileage goals. I had workouts I was supposed to do every week and the long run I was supposed to do on the weekend. So I followed that 12-week training program. And uh, if you're going to race a marathon, I highly recommend training. The longer you can train, the better, especially if you're uh, relatively new to distance running. So I had a 12-week training plan, but I had been running consistently for over a year at this point. So I already had a big volume base when I started marathon training. So near the end of training, you know, you start tapering. And that's when you start getting anxious because at this point, it's too late to do any more work. It's too late to try and you know do another fast workout or add more mileage because you need to let your body rest before the race. I thought about how I wanted to hydrate, how I wanted to fuel, where the aid stations were, how frequently were there aid stations, how often would I be able to get water, how often would I be able to um, get support or goos or calories and things like that. Uh, so I would recommend taking a very careful look at the course map both in terms of the overall path of the course, in terms of changes in elevation, and in terms of how often there are water stations. So, you know, be prepared, plan out your race, plan out how it's going to go, plan out when you're going to get to the start, when you're going to warm up, how long you're going to warm up, uh, when you're going to line up, when you're going to use the restroom, when you're going to start hydrating during the race, when you're going to take calories, and really make sure you stick to your plan. Stick to your paces if you have a goal time. Don't go out too fast. My first mile was on pace, my second mile was a little slow, and I started panicking a little bit, like I'm already behind the schedule, I'm not gonna make my time goal. But obviously, uh, you know, being consistent was what was important. Uh, I hit my half marathon in exactly uh, the time I wanted to, maybe even a little bit faster than I needed to. You know, and then you keep an eye on the clock. At 20 miles, you take a look, you figure out, you figure, hey, I have a 10K left. Uh, what kind of pace do I need to run to hit my time goal? Um, because, you know, that last 10K is when things start to hurt uh, and it gets a lot harder. And you want to be able to, you know, push yourself if you need to or knowing that you have some buffer is also helpful so you don't, you know, you don't start panicking if you slow down a little bit. I slowed down a little bit. Uh, the last 5K I started struggling. Um, so I knew, you know, based on my half time, I ran a 128 at the half, and if I had run a perfectly split race, that would have been uh, a 256. So I only slowed down, I slowed down a little bit less than two minutes in the second half, which is pretty good, especially for a first half when you don't necessarily have everything figured out in terms of hydration uh, and fueling and pacing. So I was happy with only slowing down a couple minutes in the second half. If you actually like hit the wall and you start to fall apart, you could easily slow down you know, five or ten minutes or more uh, in the second half of a marathon. So I was pretty happy with that. 
I didn't obsess over my paces and my watch. I took a look at the half, halfway point at the half marathon. I took a look at 20 miles and I took a look at 23 miles when I basically had a 5k left. So just to kind of recap my advice, if you start out, um, you start running and you have uh, ambitious goals in terms of distance or paces or time, it does take a lot of time to get there. The things that helped me most when I started running was meeting other runners. So, you know, finding a club, finding a team, joining uh, some kind of group that you could run a season with, like a cross-country season or a road uh, track season in the spring uh, was incredibly helpful. Just meeting other runners, tagging along on their workouts, learning more about running and structure, uh, mileage, and workouts, and things like that, and self-care. Uh, and then if you do have a goal race, you know, get a training plan early, start training early, plan out as much as you can because some things will go wrong, but if you plan enough correctly and you stick to your plan, you should still end up in a pretty good place. So that was a very brief recap and history of how I went from uh, a non-runner to a sub-3 marathoner in just under three years and a couple uh, pieces of advice or suggestions that I learned along the way that hopefully will be useful to other people who are also trying to run and get into distance running and trying to be competitive. Uh, and let me know in the comments if you have any questions or suggestions about other topics you want to see, um, like diet and fueling for races, when I run, when I eat before runs, when I eat after runs, and what I eat, or self-care in terms of uh, complementary strength trainings to help prevent running injury, uh, self-care like massage and stretching, foam rolling, cupping, uh, all sorts of things like that. Uh, and thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.